Okay, started recording. Okay, good, good afternoon, guys. <clears throat> okay, um, we stopped here. What we are talking, we uh, have seen reinforcement learning, uh, true learning based reinforcement learning, and this is where we stop. And uh, today, goal is to look into some methods uh, in deep reinforcement learning. Again, I'll be focusing mainly on Q learning, Q deep, uh, deep Q learning. Yeah, just to uh, like I have a smooth uh, transition. Let's go back uh, to the previous lecture. Just a uh, recap, a little bit idea. So what we have uh, in the first uh, value iteration algorithms. So we have seen three uh, value iteration algorithms. Uh, first one is called. Uh, uh, iterative algorithms, three of them. First one is called value iteration. And the uh, second one is uh, Q value iteration and policy. As the name suggests, uh, in the first method, we are trying to iteratively find uh, values, uh, value function, and so that they can converse to <coughs> the optimal value function. Then in the second function, we are obviously iteratively finding the Q values. Uh, there is a question. Could you give an example of calculating the expected reward? Uh, do you mean immediate expected reward? This one? Yeah, that one. Uh, with the basic constant matrix. Uh, why can't you why don't you just uh, uh, go through this student engagement problem okay you have a transition matrix here what is this uh, t s a s prime okay what is this this is actually a probability k given yes okay so if you substitute a is equal to 0 you get uh, P0 and P1 is uh, A is equal to one. Once you have that, what we need, uh, the reward. How is it defined? Like this. <clears throat> reward is a function of S, A, S prime, right? Here you see that uh, it is just a function of SCA, that is uh, S minus kappa A. Do you see that, Krishna? Yeah, that makes sense, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you just need to, uh, this is action and uh, you need to ask, uh, uh, the reward is easy in this case, but the reward can actually depend on S prime also. In that case it becomes uh, uh, an expectation. Here it doesn't change actually. Yeah. Calculating the expected reward would just be summing over the columns of the transition function. Yeah, so oh, times by the reward. Let me let's look at the expression. Oh man. Yeah, we are here. Yeah, what is this SCA? It is summation over all the future states or possible future states. T S C A S prime and the reward corresponding reward, isn't it? And uh, this is probability yeah. You just need to substitute and uh, it just, uh, uh, as you said, uh, this is corresponding to column uh, row of PA because PA S is here and the future state is here. So we are looking at uh, each row. That's the row sum. Yeah, row, the row times the reward. Times the reward. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. It's a dot product between this row and the reward vector. Cool? Cool, thank you so much. Thank you. And yeah. So the difficulty we have discussed yesterday that uh, if you don't know uh, the transition 
probabilities this uh, you can't compute uh, r exactly so this uh, implementation um, is not possible so uh, to overcome the difficulty we have looked at uh, generalizing this q value iteration inspired from this we used uh, uh, a different approach which doesn't really require uh, transition probabilities and uh, so we can address problems in uh, uh, reinforcement learning setup and what is that algorithm how it, how does it look uh, so <clears throat> in the q value iteration earlier we have seen this is the update rule yeah you take uh, what is the q value at a time t it's a matrix and you update uh, if your state a uh, state s and uh, you are taking uh, action a go to that particular element update that particular element okay only one element at each iteration uh, there is a question sorry is that uh, summing over the transition matrix x the reward okay let's Uh, what is the question here? Uh, I didn't understand. Like, you have a suppose p of a, and uh, take uh, ith row. You take transpose, and uh, again for a reward. Also, we have uh, for each s prime, we have a a vector. So take that a vector. Let's call it a R S A. Okay. Uh, this is vector. This is a vector which consists of R S S A one. If you have L states, R S A L. Okay. And this is a dot product. That's what we are saying here. Is that clear, Jed? Yeah, thank you. All right, come back to this case. Uh, so what we are doing here is that uh, uh, in the uh, Q value, uh, Q value iteration, we are uh, updating for all uh, pair of state and uh, action pair. But here in each iteration, we just update for one element or whichever state you're visiting, because that's what you can see. <clears throat> and again, there is a question. Uh, these are the same in this simple case, aren't they? Since, uh, yes. can, can you unmute Chris, uh, Christina? I'm not getting the question. Sorry, so the each row of the reward function would be the same in the simple case of the reward function that you had up before? Because the, it's... Uh, that's, that's correct, because it's not depending on uh, which state you are next okay yeah cool, thank yes. you. yeah yeah so yeah it's not three dimensional you have a two dimensional matrix in reward <clears throat> okay uh, this is the update we have and uh, since we can't compute this what we are doing here is that uh, we are using a stochastic gradient kind of approach and we uh, imitating this relation. Instead of taking average reward and average uh, maximum Q, we are just taking uh, whatever reward we get uh, at that instant and whatever Q value we have, the matrix you are maintaining uh, of size, yes, is the size of uh, Q value matrix, <clears throat> the table, and you take uh, for that whatever state you see, you, you are in state ST and you take action AT and you see that the future is this. And so now you have a, a reward in your hand. Also, you have a table which consists of uh, Q values. For the future uh, is the state, you take that value and along that uh, row, whatever uh, action gives you maximum Q value, you take uh, that value and uh, you get uh, this term and 
you continue to you keep uh, with this probability the previous value and that's a uh, uh, very inspired from stochastic gradient approach that's what we have uh, in rl setup notice that uh, we have uh, an agent and an environment okay they interact by giving action and a reward and also uh, state what is the state it is uh, in so this is the interaction we have can someone uh, tell me like uh, which part of this uh, model there is a s a t uh, sorry r and gamma this is the uh, mdp framework right which model actually captures uh, uh, environment is it the transition function yeah so this is uh, this defines what is the model of the environment okay if you observe we are not depending on transition probability to run this algorithm so this uh, q learning method is actually model free okay remember that it's important <coughs> so the value iteration uh in th there are like a, i told you only q learning here but you can also do the similar things for value iteration uh, value function as well as a policy policies so you can actually have three kind of uh, model free um, methods uh, approaches there is a question what is s s is a set of states okay that's the algorithm we have uh, the uh, that the algorithm in hand and we also know uh, under what conditions uh, we can actually have a convergence and under uh, some more conditions we can even say which we are not discussing much and uh, say that it actually converges to optimal optimal q value <clears throat> this is all good if you notice if state space is too high or even continuous okay and essentially this set is high dimensional then it's difficult to update each uh, q value corresponding to each pair because you might not have that much computation power to actually explore uh, so you won't be even say, suppose consider this uh, this is a actual q value function okay and this is what we want to find and our method can very well result in kind of this even though it is actually uh, finding q values uh, at some points exactly in the other points where where uh, the processor never actually visited the states they carry uh, q values uh, zero q values this is because we start uh, the algorithm with uh, <clears throat> mtri uh, there is a question i don't understand that second equation not all infinities are the same size <laughs> which second equation this one um yet no it's talking it's talking about the learning rate um yeah this uh, alpha yes it's alpha but it's not on the screen right now it's the okay, let um, me... yeah just we have alpha here i think it's down from here a bit I, but yes, here we are. Here. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't. This this hurts. This hurts me. The sum mm. of all the alphas squared is less than infinity. Mm. Infinity yeah, minus so. one is 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 infinity. Infinity infinity minus ten thousand is still infinity. 
I yeah. don't. What, what, what's alpha, the point al- being made here? <laughs> alphas are uh, less than. They are between zero and one. That's first thing to notice. Okay. okay. And uh, what about uh, this? Take this sequence. Uh, one by i. Alpha i is equal to one by i. Is this converging sequence or diverging sequence? Uh, oh, um, oh, oh! I knew this. I used to know this. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, so I think it converges. I think it converges. Diverges. <laughs> Somebody has answered already. This oh, is actually no, no. infinite, but uh, you know, if you square them, that converges. Okay. So the point. Yeah. So it it so it converges. The sum of the alphas squared. Converges? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, okay. you can. It's possible. You can have this sequence. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. That's clear. I guess. Uh, cool. Uh, so, if you can take uh, uh, alphas and note these times uh, for each S, S and A, you note when you visited them and take what is the alpha value used at that point. And those alphas should satisfy this property. Then you have convergence. And Matthew has a question. That condition with less than infinity just says that it wants the sum to be less than all infinities. This series converges. Yeah, not a question. Yeah, good. All right. So you end up having a, a sparsity in the uh, Q values if you use, uh, if you use uh, state space. Uh, or even action space. If you look at this, intuitively you want to have uh, uh, the update to be of this follow. If you just look at this particular layer, you figure out that, okay, this is the value. Many cases, the neighboring points also have very close uh, Q value. So you want to have a function. You want to actually have a function. Once you lift uh, at one point, it's like a, lifting a blanket. The neighboring points also gain some weight. Even though you never been to that uh, uh, state action, uh, uh, like a you know, state action pair, you should be able to say something about it. Yeah. So that is not happening in this uh, simple Q learning algorithm. It's, it's the moment you don't visit, you have no idea. Uh, it's always zero. Okay, and if you visit few times, you might have very um, uh, unstable value. It's not really good. You need to have enough uh, visits to a particular uh, visits to each pair to have a good approximation. To overcome this difficulty, difficulty, uh, this. Uh, Deep reinforcement learning actually uses uh, deep neural network. Before that, let's look at how this is done. <clears throat> this is done in uh, when you talk about function approximation. What we do here, instead of updating the Q values, updating this uh, table which consists of uh, Q values, we actually update a parameter. So. You can think of Q value being a function of a parameter, okay? For example, Q value function can be this. In addition to S and A, this particular parameter actually defines what shape it look like for, okay? In this example, there is a Q value function sitting on top and you can have a, a sequence of functions Think of po polynomial functions that as you increase the number of parameters, you have freedom to choose closer to the actual Q value function. So this, this example is uh, uh, with uh, linear, you have seen uh, uh, linear in linear regression. We have a similar setup here and X1, X2, we will see what are these features are, but they are just features which are uh, for each state and action you have a, a set of features and you take a Q value function for that pair in the form. And the idea is to 
approximate these theta values just the way we did in linear regression and in the previous lecture well, lectures we have seen that okay linear regression is a very simple setup let's make it more complicated and we went ahead and approximated things with uh, neural networks uh, deep neural network then we did convolutional neural network that's a motivation here i don't want to restrict only to linear or polynomial let's have a uh, more complicated network that is here if i take f of theta is not just a linear function but it can be a uh, whole neural network which takes features x1 to xn as input and gives me output the output is for each uh, like if if i give for this it, it gives a output uh, which is just a q value s comma a for that particular theta theta is weights and biases in the network that's the idea so theta what is theta in network setup it is a uh, weights and biases and that's all and it actually uses the same algorithm what we had earlier instead of uh, updating q values which we did we are updating theta so each time we update uh, theta as follows uh, for that we need to define a loss function because in neural network we have seen that we need to uh, compute gradient of the loss and we need to have a notion of loss the difficulty here is that uh, we don't have any supervisor telling us what is the actual label and and to compare our predictions with that so we uh, build a, something very similar to actual label but it is not it is we call target it is uh, correlated uh, uh, correlated from iteration to iteration which is not the case in um, supervised learning but yeah there are complications with it we will address them slowly so how how it is done what is the loss function if you remember this is the bellman equation for q value and what we are trying to do is that we want to find theta that satisfy this bellman equation say theta star that value so if this is satisfied we essentially have the optimal q value by rewriting that we have this expression i'm just uh, using the uh, expectation with expect to model <clears throat> so if you updating this theta we want this to be equal but we don't have equality uh, because we don't have a solution of bellman equation we know that there is a unique solution to this bellman equation since in the updates approximations uh, we are not having that solution so there is a gap between the right hand side quantity and left side quantity so we want to minimize that gap that's how we define a loss here so the loss is essentially expected loss is essentially same we are taking this other side yeah <clears throat> this is not a function of a, a future of a s prime this is a function of s prime the next state so this is we treat as a, a prediction which we get from the neural network and this as a target instead of uh, real labels which are present in the supervised learning since we don't have them we actually take this as a the target and we want to minimize this too so we are actually trying to reduce the expected value of this here target is defined as follows i just playing around because uh, we need to define these things because to build the intuition otherwise this is what we are trying to do we just trying to minimize this and uh, <clears throat> this is uh, whatever i just explained that is what i'm saying here target s prime acts like an actual label while x like uh, the left side quantity acts like a prediction 
in the uh, gradient descent uh, when you apply gradient descent uh, we need to compute the gradient of the last function we know that uh, our theta uh, controls the prediction function uh, this neural network this is the theta this is output this is q s a theta okay that is here and this target we think of it is uh, not output from this uh, network for time being so if you want to minimize uh, this loss if you want to find the gradient with respect to parameter okay l of theta s a this is what we want to compute we don't uh, differentiate this target because we are trying to fix that only thing we need to differentiate is uh, the prediction q value so if you do that this is uh, what you get in update this is if you look back and compare with the gradient descent this is exactly what we have so this needs gradient of the prediction only not the target otherwise it's okay sorry it got stuck okay um yeah is there, are there any questions so far i hope it's clear is it clear for at least answer that question no can you hear me yeah thank you <laughs> I just want to have feedback. Uh, yeah, so so let's look at this expression. When we are computing delta, the target. Okay, this is the okay. Let's uh, this is target first term, and this is uh, the predicted term. In the predicted term, you have st, at, the current state, and action you have taken. Once you take action, you know what is the next state. That is used in regret uh, target. That and also here. So when you compute this max, you don't compute for the current state. You compute for the next state which you observe. That is important and. The, you take uh, action that is uh, maximizing this uh, q value however the parameters are same whatever parameter is available for us at this current uh, iteration that's what we use in both the cases and once you compute the delta we update the parameter and you repeat the same thing in each iteration all right that is for any approximation you have any kind of system where you can find an approximation then you can do that particularly if you use deep neural network then it's it becomes a deep q learning network so yeah whatever i just explained now uh, instead of a function approximation put a neural network and you get deep neural network the key points to observe here is that <clears throat> x for each time x is formed by state action pair we have seen x12 a simple xn so yeah the features are uh, i'll give you example regarding the atari games where x1 xn these are actually pixel values for uh, whatever frame you have in front of the camera that is the pixel values so that pixel value depends on the state of the game and the action taken that's why these features are functions of uh, state you are in and the action you have taken and the uh, second point which i already mentioned that uh, the target is not really different for uh, not, not really independent uh, across the iterations uh, whatever uh, 
parameter you are computing now will uh, will be sitting in the target expression in the next iteration so they are correlated unlike uh, supervised learning yeah we are using square loss function that's what what are the challenges exploration that's uh, always uh, an issue one has to be careful <clears throat> We are trying to actually uh, minimize the loss for each pair, state action pair, and it can be uh, so many if uh, state space is higher or action space is higher. <clears throat> do we need to actually, uh, do we really have a fair uh, exploration of all these states when it is uh, bigger, the space is bigger? You might not have. So, you need to have a, a very clever approach, some adaptive approach to actually deal with these things. And they, again, they are depend, uh, very problem dependent. But one key thing is that whatever a policy you're uh, using, whatever adaptive scheme you're using, you would like to have uh, less importance to the uh, state action pair, which state action pair, which has smaller Q values. Also, they appear rarely in the game, okay, or in the uh, in the process. So you don't want really uh, put so much accuracy there. So that's one thing uh, adaptive method has to take it. Another one is that, as I mentioned earlier, if uh, two state action pairs are very the features x one two. this say xn this is corresponding to pair this one and you can also have s prime prime this is corresponding to you have a features corresponding to this pair yeah if these features are not very different you don't want to actually spend time on uh, uh, like exploring both, you should be able to say that, okay, my rewards also will be same. And so uh, if I know one one uh, state action pair, I should be able to know about the other one. And uh, so you would like to have methods which actually uh, takes care of this. And the next uh, issue is uh, stabilize, stabilizing because the targets and uh, the iterations are not independent when it comes to targets uh, if there is uh, some error in one iteration it can actually uh, spread quickly to other particularly because we are actually doing max ta q s prime uh, a prime and theta okay if there is a error, suppose a state which is not actually good state, uh, state action pair got uh, maximum value, you end up actually playing that more often. And as you play this error actually can spread quickly. And so you want to actually stabilize uh, your approach, stable when to, to deal with these things. And, <clears throat> Before uh, going into how it is handled, let's look at uh, uh, this important uh, paper. This was uh, groundbreaking uh, in this direction, uh, which is this paper. You can have a look, and uh, it is the first time they actually proposed deep Q learning, and they played several uh, Atari games on this. Uh, so there are some examples of games here. Probably you guys already see played these games. Uh, I never played Pong, but I have played Breakout, Space Invaders, Sequest, Beam Rider. Okay, from screenshot you can recognize what they are. So this paper they developed a deep uh, Q learning algorithm, and we have seen one of them the screen uh, GIF file in the first lecture where DeepMind could play very well against uh, breakout. So. 
<clears throat> all right uh, what they did they actually created a convolutional neural network i am going to give you some specifications of this network it can it's surprising once uh, it is trained that the parameters are tuned it could play uh, like uh, against any game here it's not that the game dependent the parameters it's, a, it's a, such a successful story where the parameters are same for all games and what uh, what did they present they didn't uh, give any uh, handmade instructions or any prior knowledge to the uh, uh, the uh, agent it just learned from playing there is a video and it has to start playing and the video is uh, of this resolution and with uh, uh, speed 60 edge and this is the input and it has to learn and uh, its own and it could actually eventually get it and uh, could play what are the elements here this is the uh, video quality each frame is of this size with rgb what they did uh, in the construction of a convolution neural network is that first they pre-process this frame size to a frame size of this how did they manage uh, first uh, This is the original frame size, and they actually made it grayscale, just the way you did it in, uh, I guess it's assignment question. Yeah, and they down sampled it too. Uh, don't get into too many details. They have to do it because uh, uh, computationally uh, demanding if you don't actually compress this image. So they have to down scale it to 84 by 84. That's once they got that, that is what input to the uh, convolution neural network, neural network. It is simpler than what we are actually playing with, uh, uh, with and the network we used in practical. For, there are two convolution layers. First layer has the 16 channels, eight by eight kernel, stride four. They didn't mention about what is the uh, padding. I'm assuming it's zero probably, maybe it doesn't matter and the real actuation just like us and the second uh, hidden layer again has a uh, is also convolution net layer 32 channels 4 by 4 kernel and stride is 2 again it's a railway actuation then you have one fully connected layer with the 256 neurons then output gives these many values, Q values for each action, it gives a Q value. You have uh, input S and yeah, you have for action for that uh, student train, it should be of this form. Yeah, you get these outputs. And once you have, you can choose uh, maximum, which is which action maximizing and you keep repeating and uh, you put uh, next next frame you take you update uh, your parameter theta and you just implement that and this is a good video i would recommend you to have it just explains what is uh, there in the paper and you gain little uh, some more de details uh, than what you we just discussed uh, so have a look at it and uh, they just uh, simply did that also they modified the algorithm to make it more uh, stable first thing they have done is uh, if you look at uh, algorithm We are using same theta, which is currently available to us. Theta for in the target and also prediction. It's if there is an error in the uh, prediction now, you know, if you made a really big mistake, this can actually result in next target that will 
uh, quickly translate it to more errors uh, later on. So to avoid that, to make it more stable, what they did first is that uh, they used batches. They do, didn't up, update uh, theta for the target after each iteration. They, they were doing only after C iteration, again, after C iteration. So I think uh, C is 32 in their case. And, but for prediction, they were updating theta every iteration. On the other side for target, they were updating only after C iterations. And uh, that is the first uh, step towards uh, stabilizing it. That is what I'm explaining here. That can be illustrated. Uh, this is a screen grab from that paper, not that paper, another review paper. And this is what I say. This, uh, after every C uh, iterations, you update the target. But the Q prediction is updated every time you move to a new state. All right, and also, how do you uh, draw an action? How do you actually select an action? This is what we do. You go to your current state, and the greedy approach is says that okay, whatever Q value you have, just take the action that maximizes Q value. Of course, there is uh, in the function approximation you have a theta t also. Yeah. You select argmag of that. If it is a set, you take arbitrarily one of them. Okay, you select from this set. That that's what uh, earlier algorithm. But again, that doesn't really provide exploration enough. So what these people do did is that uh, uh, they use something called epsilon greedy strategy. So you follow this this step with one minus epsilon probability. Whenever you toss a coin, which has success probability one or, or one minus epsilon, if head comes, you just follow this. And if tail comes, you actually randomly pick an action, uh, action and do it. So that way you uh, get to explore the state uh, action pairs, which are not explored. <clears throat> they also do something called clipping because they're playing against uh, different uh, games. They want to, they, they have different uh, scales, like uh, some have uh, three uh, scores and some have the 18 to actually uh, have some more uniform. The, what they do, they did the clipping, they clip the rewards. All the positive rewards are uh, treated as one. All the negative rewards are treated as minus one and zero rewards, of course, is treated as zero. That kind of clipping they use uh, that also apparently stabilizes it. And the one has to take care of these steps when uh, implementing uh, this uh, deep Q, uh, Q learning networks. And all right, uh, you have seen that uh, we are using in target as well as uh, in the prediction, we are using the same parameters. Also in taking action, uh, picking action, for example, in the greedy, we are using same parameter for uh, uh, selecting the action. Also uh, for evaluating action that is comes from here, also done with the same parameter. To avoid that, the target is actually modified a little bit. Earlier we had a maximum here, and where uh, this expression was actually here. Action was selected uh, in this is this, this Q value. Now what we do, we select the action first uh, with respect to current uh, current parameter, and we update the target according to the batch parameter. Okay, there is a current a current parameter and batch parameter is updated somewhere uh, uh, before. Uh, and that parameter is used for updating target. And yeah, uh, I, I want to just rush a little bit. We are, have, I think we are done, that's good. Uh, the, this is uh, because 
we are using different parameters for different kind of updates. We call it double DQN. This another one is more general. It's called distributional deep Q learning network. What we do here is that uh, if you remember definition of V of S is actually expectation. It's expected cumulative reward. When you are playing game, the rewards are random. So the cum cumulative sum also a random quantity. The whatever here is uh, as random. Our goal is to actually minimize expectation. Oh, sorry, maximize the expectation. Here, what they do, instead of actually finding values or Q values for that matter, they actually uh, update this random variables itself. Let's denote that random variable as get pi, which is if you're playing with the policy pi and starting from some state s, okay? What is the expected cumulative reward you get, which is a random quantity? This is exactly z pi. And if you take expectation at a pair s here, you get a q value, all right? <clears throat> and yeah, what is the advantage? Instead of actually knowing uh, this expected value, if you know the distribution, you know more information and you can actually uh, take maybe better decisions. And there are some uh, papers which actually cite uh, advantages of this method. Have a look. And they seem to work better than these, uh, you know, like you know, updating expected rewards. And also, the interesting part is that uh, even these uh, cumulative rewards, which are random in nature, they also satisfy Bell Bellman equation and, and in a nice way. So that's why uh, it's easy to modify the algorithms. And yeah, uh, that's all we have. I would like to actually point to one particular review. This is uh, appeared in 2018. This I found like it's not really mathematical in, intense or anything, but if you want to actually have a look at uh, what has happened in uh, reinforcement learning till 2018, I think this uh, review actually speaks really uh, and has a good collection of this history. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, we only looked at Q values, Q learning, but what about uh, value function can we do same thing with the value function yes you can do you can uh, and they seem to have uh, applications some areas whatever policy that is also uh, covered in this uh, policy gradient descent uh, deep uh, deep learning uh, yeah deep uh, reinforcement learning methods and all these methods are model independent then it talks about model based uh, methods as well and then combination of these two, integrating model free and model based gives some advantages. Then concept of some generalization of this whole concept and what are the benchmark examples like Atari games, uh, what are the other benchmark, uh, you know, when you are doing research, uh, uh, proposing a new method, how do you test it? And they talk about it. And again, we didn't talk about partial, partially observable POM DPs, and they actually highlight what are the papers, what are the research happened in that direction. And I think, yeah, that's uh, I have given the, uh, in the references this this might work. Okay, uh, before ending this lecture, I yeah, this is the last lecture more or less like the next one is very general. So I would like to uh, end this course as a good person. So there is a hint for the tomorrow's quiz. Uh, there are two questions, uh, as you know, there are two questions from this uh, uh, reinforcement learning. One question will be uh, on contraction, uh, contraction. So be prepared. It's a very easy question. So just 
read a little bit about contraction mapping and it should be able to address them. All right, are there any questions? Guys, speak up, please. No, thank you, Jed. Yeah, I think, uh, and the second question, the remaining part. Thank you, Rohan. And we- oh, uh, the Thank yous for the question or for the lecture? They gotta be clear. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, it's <laughs> thank combined. <you> <laughs> <laughs> And the second question, I think uh, Sune is not going to like me now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? Is there anything, Yone? We will meet in 10 minutes, I guess. So, yeah. We'll, uh... I five minutes? Yeah, around 10 minutes. Yeah, in, in the hour? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, I'm leaving this now. I'll see you, Yone, soon.